When my eldest son Thomas was seven, we, uh, I went to pick him up from school one afternoon and his teacher ca called me to one side, can I just have a quick word? So I thought, oh no, what's he done now? And the teacher said, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you this. She said, uh, we did it today, we did What Does My Dad Do? And all the children were standing up saying, my, my father's an accountant, my dad's a banker. She said, your Thomas stood up very proudly and announced to the whole class, my dad's Jack the Ripper. I started uh, my walking tours in 1982 and at the time I was a postman working just down the road from here. This was the area that my round was in and going round I started seeing all these wonderful street names that I recognised from childhood reading and so I started researching it and then when I'd be sitting on the frame sorting I'd start telling the postman stories about the area. So I put an advert in Time Out one Sunday afternoon in 1982 and 18 people turned up and I did that to um, I've done it ever since, and so I've been going now for, the, for over 30 years. Our Jack the Ripper tour is, is unique in that every one of our guides is an expert on the subject. So they're not just guides who are learning a script, reciting a script, and that's it. These are guides who've written books on, on Jack the Ripper. There's John Bennett, Philip Hutchinson, myself, and we've all written between us 10 books on Jack the Ripper. So when you come on our Jack the Ripper walk, you're getting taken around with guides who they're not just guides, they're people who know the subject and have a passion for the subject. And that's what a lot of our clients comment on, that you can actually see the passion. I think we're, we're quite un unusual in that we make it not so much about Jack the Ripper and the murders, but about the victims. We don't think of our tours as being guided tours. We think them of, that of them as guided discussions. So people are welcome to ask questions, chat about things, discuss things. And the aspect I like of it in particular is that within about 10 minutes, people are standing around, we're discussing things, we're chatting about things. And it's like a group of friends, if you like, going around looking at things. So there's that social aspect of it. The other thing I think about it is the route, because where we start is all Gate East, and that is almost the beginning epicenter of the Jack the Ripper murders. Then you get an alleyway across the road from where we start and you go through this wonderful sinister arch that is more or less exactly as it was in 1888 and you go into this cobbled alleyway and suddenly the 21st century has disappeared and you're back there in 1888 and you're at the start of a murder which some people still do think was the first murder by Jack the Ripper and that's Martha Turner in all the early August 1888 and then you go around onto Brick Lane and Brick Lane uh, on the corner of Thrall Street you've got this lovely old well, it's an old pub then it's the frying pan it's now an Indian restaurant because Brick Lane is lined with Indian restaurants and the first thing to hit you on Brick Lane is the smell of curry I mean if you've not eaten you're, 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 you're salivating by the time you get to that point but we point out that restaurant and say it's in this building that Mary Nichols the first acknowledged victim of the Jack the Ripper she drank away her DOS money inside this building so we move on from there and then we go into this wonderful knot of streets, Fournier Street, Princeton Street, and these are lined by houses that were built in the 18th century. These houses are the back cloth against which the Jack the Ripper saga was played out. And then we wend our way through the streets. And from that point on, we, we, we're sort of talking about the murders, how people began to realise they had a, a repeat killer loose, how panic then gripped the area. We then start following the police investigation. And then we arrive at Christchurch Spitalfields, and it's a wonderful little corner where you've got the Ten Bells pub, which is the pub where a lot of the victims drank, and Christchurch Spitalfields. And this is a soaring white spire. I mean, it really is. It dominates its surroundings today. It dominated its surroundings in 1888. And I always point to, the, to that church spire to the groups. I say, look at that church spire and think on this. Every one of Jack the Ripper's victims would have looked up at that church spire that you're now looking at. And I think it really does connect our age with that of the Rippers. And then we go on to the Mary Kelly murder. Then we go to the doorway where the chalk message was found. And then we sort of squeeze our way into Mitre Square and we finish in Mitre Square. It's a fascinating story in its own right because it exposes us to a side of society in Victorian times we might have forgotten and so what a lot of people say about our tour is that we actually bring in the plight of the victims, the tragedy of the victims and the fact that this is a society that really has a forgotten element, the, the downcast poor and that's where Jack the Ripper victims were drawn from so you get the experts but also I like to say you get taken back there and you get to see not just the story but you get to see the conditions against which the story was played out.